RBI going to replace the physical cash which we are using right now? Are you thinking we have UPI? Then why did they launch eRupee? Will the results be similar to demonetization? They have said it's digital. So what will the people without smartphone do? Is digital currency cryptocurrency? Hello and welcome back to Freedom English Channel. This is Sana Ram. Let us understand what is digital currency. It is nothing but a medium of exchange that is generated, stored and transferred electronically, which means there is not going to be any physical form. And this digital currency is going to be considered as a legal tender in our nation. Legal tender is nothing but the currency which is used in the nation by the people to buy something or to pay back their loans which they have borrowed. So basically our currency notes were legal tender here and now this digital currency will be considered as a legal tender as well. The e-rupee launched by Reserve Bank of India, which is also known as the Central Bank Digital Currency, is going to be a complement. It is not going to replace the physical currencies which we are using right now, is being said by RBI. So they are saying this is going to work as an additional payment avenue to the users. So they have divided this into two, which is retail and wholesale. So retail includes us, the end users for daily transactions, and wholesale is the secondary market, for example, stock market. So the pilot project is launched in four cities with four banks. And the cities include Delhi, Bangalore, Mumbai and Bhuvaneshwar. And the banks include Yes Bank, IDFC First Bank, ICICI and State Bank of India. Following this, they are going to extend or I would say expand this service to other states as well, which includes Ahmedabad, Indore, Shimla, Guwahati, Hyderabad, Lucknow, Kochi, Patna and even Gangtok. And the banks which are going to be involved in this process would be HDFC, Kotak Mahindra, Union Bank of India and Bank of Baroda. So basically what they have said is this digital currency or the e-rupee is going to be same as the physical currency notes which we have. The value is going to be same. The only difference is that we will not be having the physical form in our hand. So everything is going to be digital. It will be produced, it will be stored and will be transferred electronically. So now one question will rise in our mind and that is, we have been transferring our money digitally, storing our money digitally, true, we have been using UPI, then why do we need e-rupee now? So I'll tell you the answer here. There is a big difference between UPI and e-rupee. UPI is something where your bank is linked to. So basically you are using UPI, maybe Google Pay or Phone Pay, your money gets debited from the bank. And how does your bank account have money in it? Because you have deposited physical cash in the bank, correct? So basically you are using physical cash here. The cash goes into the bank. Your bank is connected with UPI. Once you use UPI for the payment, it gets debited. But when it comes to e-rupee, you don't need a bank to be connected or linked to it, which means there is not going to be any physical cash involved in this process. And you will be having specific wallets for e-rupee as well as of now with the banks which I've mentioned earlier. So if you're someone who has an account in S-Bank, you can go and transfer your physical cash into digital currency, which means e-rupee, and then use it for your daily transaction. So basically, the bank will create a wallet for you and your digital currency will be stored in that. But they are also telling that has UPI as separate apps. Same way, we will be getting apps in e-rupee as well. But if you want to try the digital currency right now, if you live in those four states which I have mentioned and you have a bank account with the four banks which I have mentioned, you can take your cash, go to the bank, create a wallet which the bank will do for you and then convert your physical cash into digital currency and use it for your day-to-day -day transaction. And they have also mentioned that people with no smartphones or no internet connectivity can also use this. How? So they will be having offline transaction which means they will be getting an e-voucher through QR code or SMS and they can use this as beneficiaries to do their payments. They have also mentioned one more thing that is KYC has to be done. But if you have verified KYC documents and you don't have a bank account, that is not a problem. The wallet will be created for you. So basically, this wallet is not linked to any bank. And if you don't have a bank account, that doesn't mean you cannot use e p And that is one big plus of digital currency. The next question that will come in our mind is, is digital currency and cryptocurrency the same? RBI, even before the launch of e rupee has clearly mentioned that digital currency is going to be centralized. Cryptocurrency is decentralized, which means cryptocurrency cannot be controlled by one authority. It has so many people involved in it, but when it comes to 
the digital currency rbi is going to be the only one person who is going to take care of everything so reserve bank of india has the full authority over digital currency so many precautions have been taken with the guidelines of digital currency and it is much safer than cryptocurrency so till now we have understood what is digital currency how it is different and it is actually different from cryptocurrency we also understood what is e rupee so now i just want to keep forward few points which was discussed in the world economic forum number 1 they did say that cryptocurrency is an inspiration for them to create something like digital currency that cryptocurrency showed them that there is a way like this in which currency can be made and moved the value remains the same so they created something like digital currency but they have clearly mentioned that it is not like cryptocurrency not like bitcoin or not like ethereum so digital currency will be having a different interface people can use it but they won't be needing a bank and they have put forward three benefits or i would say three motives which they had in their mind while creating the digital currency number one they have focused on the migrants because normally when we go and live somewhere in a different nation and we earn money when we want to transfer the money to our place to our home we end up paying a little more correct that is one minus another minus it's not fast i transfer it on tuesday my family would receive it on wednesday So they want to make it quick. They want to make it instant. So they thought digital currency would be a solution. Second point: digital wallet is about digital inclusion. But when it comes to a digital currency, micro enterprises, small enterprises, and individual farmers can actually partake in the modern economy. And the third benefit or the third motive which they had in their mind when they wanted to introduce the digital currency is they wanted to root out the illicit finance. So here is the big question. the central bank digital currency is it going to be a boost to our economy or is it going to bring the indian economy down so basically 53% of our indian economy is consisted of informal and illicit sector so this would actually remove the shadow economy secondly the expenses associated with the paper money consumes a significant portion of rbi's account books which means damaged notes have to be replaced fresh notes have to be printed so basically they spend a lot when it comes to printing the paper currency and you know the population of our country correct and when it's digital currency everything is going to be digital so the expenses associated with this is going to go down so now the big question in india we have rural areas where people are still using the traditional banking services which means they go to the bank withdraw money they go to the bank and deposit money how is the government or rbi going to educate the people in rural areas to use e rupee how are they going to use this digital currency so this question has to be answered and of course measures will be taken the second question here is cyber crimes india is prone to cyber crimes we have seen so many threats and crimes happening in india on the cyber side so has precaution been taken here so now what they have to do is give more protection strict regulations and cyber security on place will help us so basically when india's central bank digital currency strategy is made it should have or it should guarantee zero disturbance to the economy to the people and minimal economic shock in that case this would be a boon to us and let's wait and see how we as public react to it and how rbi and the government together move it and take it forward So yes through this video we have understood what is digital currency what is e rupee and they have launched this in retail and wholesale in india wholesale happened in november 1 and retail happened in december 1 and we as public are going to react to it so we'll wait and see how it is going to help us and if in case we face any problems what solutions they are going to give us and with this point i finish my video and in case if you like this video give a thumbs up and if you think this will be beneficial for others please give a share and if you are not subscribed to our channel go ahead subscribe our channel and please install freedom app and register yourself we have farming courses we have business courses and personal finance courses thousand plus courses are available and mentors are there who are going to train you from a to z all you have to do is learn from the mentors implement the same in life and of course change your life the way you want it to be with this note my video comes to an end i'll see you again in the next video until then you guys take care and bye bye